You're watching Pegarai TV, Rhode Island's public access channel. Sheikh Abu Hakim Abdullah, President Chairman of Al Masjid Sharia Allah, AMSA, a nonprofit organization operating in the state of Rhode Island, USA. The last time I left you, I was telling you about economics, jobs, and other things I've been telling you this for years. Nobody seems to be listening to me but one or two brothers maybe one or two brothers in Rhode Island. But everybody's afraid to hear the truth. I'm coming to you now, again, on the same subject. A lot of people don't understand at times what I'll be talking about because I'm not saying things the way they used to hearing it. I used to hear a straight line thing, a conversation thing, a straight line thing of faith theory. I'm speaking in parts, parables. I'm speaking to the Muslims, those that still believe in the law, those that still want to serve the law. Those that act as believers, physically, spiritually, and economically. I'm speaking to you, because you're the one that had to save Islam in the future. I guess this is why Allah has brought us up to understand that the few can take on the many. A small group can take on a large group and win, be successful. And this is what we will learn to believe and, and learn to accept. Because right now, what I'm saying to you seems to be only a few of us that want to deal like deal in this. Only a few of us want to save the dean. The way it looks and acts, that only a few of us is accepting the spiritual, the physical dean of a law. We seem to be putting our own desires and everything else in our dean. We're going around trying to make things our way, the way we want it to be. We want to serve Islam, serve Allah and Islam the way we want to serve Islam, Allah and Islam. Not the way he commands us to serve him. We have adapted many things in, in Islam that to me, to me and others like myself, don't accept as being Islamic looking. Let's take, for instance, our clothes. Every country I know, I look at on the boob tube. The Muslims are the majority. It looks like I'm looking at a suburban New York, a suburban Chicago, a suburban England, a city in England. I look like I'm looking, I look, it looks like I'm looking at wood choppers in the woods. The men are walking around looking completely European and they go in their clothing. And a lot of their habits today. They don't look like Muslims. 
To me, a Muslim is supposed to look like how the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu looked in, in, in his day and told us in the Quran and the Hadiths. Not dressed down in some thousand dollar suit, some golden ring and watch, tie and different suits and stuff. Not looking like a pimp or a wood chopper, but looking like a bona fide Muslim. With a garment on, trying not to show they let others lower selves. With a kufi on their head, or a kamish. With a garment on. There's no way in the world I walk out in that street and feel comfortable looking like all the people that are acting like pagans. Yes, I say that openly. All the people I run into out in the street, majority of them, are running around like this is Solomon and Gomorrah, Pompeii. Oh, Greece, city-states of Rome, and it's the way they look it. I see them in patent leather shoes. suit on, tie, cufflinks, all the rest of it. I see them coming to meetings, they all look alike, they all look alike, all trying to dress like, 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 like the Europeans or the people of the West. I see the women the same way now, they just got a headpiece on their head and got a sweater on and tight pants and whatnot. And this is the way they want to look. And they, the first thing you say, they, you say something to them, the first thing they would say, well, I got Islam in my heart. If you had it in your heart, I don't believe you'd be walking around trying to look like people that don't have nothing in their heart to me. I'm from the United States. I was born here. I was raised in the United States. I'm not a foreigner to this country. I can tell you what it's like in this country. I, I, I lived it. In this country and other countries like this in, the U, in Europe, they pass in laws that's completely completely contrary to all Islam. They say in things out their mouth that it's completely foreign to Muslims to mention, say these kind of things. And this is the one we want to look like? They got men marrying men. Well, I know it's been going on for years. It's not just something that just happened yesterday. It's been going on for years. Matter of fact, it goes back further than the Quran and the Hadith. It's been going on in Greece. It's been going on in Rome. It's been going on all over the world. It's been being practiced for some time. but not as open as it is today.
prostitution, robbery, selling narcotics, alcohol. All these things been going on for years. And the law brought forth is long. And in Mecca, Medina, in Mecca they used to run around the cupboard, naked, no clothes on. They used to walk the street sometimes with no clothes on. It's acceptable. During the days of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu and his long that began to stop. That was stopped. They used to take babies and kill them. It's a girl baby, they put it, bury it alive in the sand. Take it outside and bury it somewhere. Today you can't do that. There's so many things happen contrary to the Islam today that make your head swim. Like that, so, oh man, what is happening? And we're not trying to change it back. Uh, not, not, not all of us are not trying to change it back. There's quite a few of us, I guess, trying to change it back. I don't know of how too many, myself personally. What I've been running into around me is people that's trying to make Islam become a Islamic Christianity. I'll use that phrase, Islamic Christianity. Because they trying to use these things like separation of church and state. That's what was going on, that's what's going on in Egypt. They trying to separate church and state. They trying to make Islam a spiritual thing only. And they want a democracy or a physical thing which is impossible to do, which is not, not, not impossible to do. It's just that it's not acceptable by Islam. Because every Muslim sh should be governed by the Sharia of Islam. Because that's what's in the Quran and the Hadith. Because Islam has a physical bind, binder on it. There's physical laws in this law, many of them. So you have to abide those by those by those physical laws if you're a Muslim. You can't say I don't I'm not going to abide by the laws and be a Muslim. It's incumbent upon you to follow those laws. And I'm talking to you, you Muslims out there, whether you, whether you, whether you are, 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 are hypocrites or not. But I say this to you, if the shoe fit, you gotta wear it. But I'm not calling you a hypocrite, I'm just saying what you're acting like out there, some of you. Allah told the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu to strive against the hypocrites. He wasn't talking about the hypocrites in Christianity, the hypocrites in Buddhism, the hypocrites in anything other than Islam. When he, when he says don't, a Muslim doesn't go to bed hungry, or go to bed without worrying if his brother will have nothing to eat, without feeding his brother. He just heard what he said, brother. We're not supposed to be worrying about what everybody next door don't have, or the whole block, or the whole neighborhood. We're supposed to be worrying about the Muslim, how to feed the Muslim. This is why Allah told you, the non-believer and the Christian are protectors one of each other. The Protestant of church, the, 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 the Jew, and the Christian are protectors one of each other also. And he said, if you don't do the same, you Muslims, there's going to be a lot of mischief and different things happening upon the earth. 
And that's what's happening right now today. So I don't know what you're thinking about walking around here, but I know what, you, what I'm thinking about. I'm thinking about the wall, the big wall, W-A-L-L, wall, wall, a wall. That's in front of us. It's been built up around us now. Everything we call righteous in Islam now has been accepted in name as being illegal. Let's take, for instance, Mujahideen. Mujahideen is one that strives in Allah's name for Islam and Allah. Today, the, the non-believer and the, and, and the democratic system is calling a mujahideen a terrorist. That he or she is a jihadist. Another one. Sentimentalist. One that wants to, something to be back the way it was in the beginning. That again, I'll tell you this. Uh, Islamists, one that believes in Islam. There's a good Islamist and a bad Islamist. They have put two different Islamists on us now. You got the good Islamist that is a, that is a modern. They don't call him Islam, they call him modern. They call the terrorists an Islamist today. Listen to what I'm saying to you. This should show you there's war against Islam. But everybody keeps saying, well, I'm not warring against Islam. But there's a picture one time came out and it says, I come in peace. And he was tearing the world apart and said, I come in peace. We must do something about this. So how do we do it? I'll tell you this, I think you should do it. I figure every one of you brothers and sisters that's sitting down there looking at what I'm saying should go to the mirror and really look at yourselves. All you Muslims, Muslim women, Muslim men, should go look at themselves, both of you. And really examine yourselves. Not your desires. Don't put your desires into your deed. Because like I said, when the desires are into the hearts of the believers, so does Shaitan, the devil. That is a quote from a law. Quote a law. Well, I advise you not to put your desires in this thing. Anytime you're trying to alter the look of Islam and anything in Islam, you are violating the Islamic way of life. I don't care who you think you are, King Fatu or whatever you think you are, who you think you are. Prince so-and-so, you are violating the laws of Islam. And by violating the laws of Islam and living violating those laws, you are consider yourself a hypocrite because you're saying one thing and doing another. That's a hypocrite. You're also a rejecter, which is also a rejecter. 
which is called Kafa Rum. One who rejects the name, one who rejects the law and the Islam. Kaifa, Kaifa. So I advise you to go ahead and do this. Take all the Western garments that you have and put them in the closet or in the bag and go down and begin to get yourself some Islamic looking garments and put them on. I don't care what your job is, put them on. That's what you have to do. I see brothers overseas working building homes and apartment buildings and office buildings in, in, in Islamic garments from Bangladesh and other religious spots. And when the dawn is called, they lay down their hammers and their tools and they make wudu, they clean themselves and march across the street to the mosque or march to the open field if they don't have a mosque nearby and lay down their rug and make salat. So I advise you to do the same now and begin to change your ways. Allah puts many tests out before us and some of them are so obvious that a blind man can follow them. So obvious that a blind man can literally follow them. Bismillah. I figured that's what you should do now. That's step number one in, t in doing, doing what you're doing. Then the next thing you do is make wudu, go to the maseli, the prayer mat, and make two rakats of repentance to a law for living your life, your desires, equal to his demands of what you should live. And forgive you, ask forgiveness for your disobedience to his commands. I've seen some things that happen to us. I've seen grown men don't have five dollars in their pocket. Grown men. And when they ask to give a law something to further, their, to further the, the dean, they don't have nothing to give. In the United States, you can make a hundred dollars a day picking up garbage. That's right. You can go around this bottle here.
I don't see it on this one. I don't see it on this one here. Maybe I can. I need some more glasses. But a lot of these bottles are worth five cents. I don't know, I guess this year has played out. They yeah, gave up five cents on this too many times, I guess. I don't see the five cents on it. It says they're not for sale in bottle disposal deposit states. I don't know what that means. But I think it's been saved one time before. But anyway, in some places, you can make money off of these bottles. Tin cans, soda bottles, nickel six cents a bottle. This is what you can make. So I advise you brothers and sisters, To begin to do what you have to do. Pride is not going to get you money, get you, get you fed. But I advise you to go ahead and do what you have to do in order to survive in this country, in this world. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillah. Be it out of me. Ekmanurahim. Oliki yom medadi. Yakana budi bo yakana nusti. It is not said to tell nusti. Said to tell the thing that Ali ingo magzubi Ali ingo la adorahim. Ali ingo la adorahim.